Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. This is Isaiah Yeshayahu 55. That's Yeshayahu Perak Nun Hey. Um, and uh, we're going to continue, um, but we're going to do the entire chapter today. This is an extremely famous one. It's read several times during the year in the synagogue as part of the Haftorah service. Um, and uh, if anyone paid attention to that part of the service, they would be familiar with these verses. It's also famous uh, uh, material, source material for numerous um, uh, sermons over the centuries, especially during the high holidays, during the time of year when we focus on the ideas of repentance uh, and teshuva. So let us begin. Um, um, before I start, uh, just uh, real quick, in the last chapter, in 54, we had God speaking to Zion, God was speaking to Zion and Jerusalem. The chapter before that, we had the nations of the world speaking about Israel at the time of redemption. Each chapter, and sometimes within the chapter themselves, uh, it is extremely important to focus on who the speaker is, who he's speaking to, and what he's speaking about. So this chapter is Ishayahu, the prophet himself, speaking. Uh, in the beginning, he speaks himself. And um, he's really trying like a new tactic to convince the people to listen to God, um, a tactic which he hasn't tried yet. Now, throughout the book, we've had Isaiah speaking to the people all the way back in the beginning. We had, especially if we go back to chapter 1, Two and three, it was more of a, a criticism. He was rebuking the people for their wrongdoings, and and many occasions, such as in um, chapter ten, we had Yeshayahu to, trying to convince the people by telling them about the destruction that would rain upon them if they don't shape up, so to speak. We had in chapter fifty, he said, uh, "Listen," he said, "Follow my example, just like I didn't give up, and despite the shame and embarrassment and." And suffering, I stuck with my mission, so you should also stick with your mission and be faithful to it. We got in chapter 51 where he said, look at your ancestors and listen to God because just like they listened and remember where you came from and your history and appreciate your history and so on. So now he's trying a new tactic. And um, and uh, in the middle, he's going to quote God himself um, as if God himself was speaking, which is something that's happened often. So again... We have Ishayahu speaking, and he says as follows, Hoy, which is a, a, a sometimes translated as woe, and sometimes it just means like, Hoy, pay attention, which is probably the better translation, at least here. So listen up. Hoy, kol tzomei l'chul Whomever is thirsty, let him go to water. In other words, this is something, what happens when people are thirsty, you go to water. Vasher ein lo kesef, and he who does not have any money, lechu shivru ve'echolu, go and purchase food anyway, which is kind of odd. If you don't have money, go purchase, how do you purchase food if you don't have money? Because he says, lechu, and go buy it below kesef, without money. Uvelo mechir, and without any price, you can buy yayin v'cholav. Wine and milk. Now, wine and milk typically are more expensive than water. Water is something that, in general, is free, um, you know, or at least abundant. However, uh, wine and milk is something that would cost money. But what he's saying here is, when you're thirsty, you go to drink. But what, what, that, but uh, because this is referring to not uh, physical uh, food and drink which would require money and expenditure, right? And as we'll see in the coming verses. However, when you need spiritual sustenance, Yeshayahu is trying to tell the people that when it comes to God, when it comes to um, trust in God, belief in God, and the sustenance that comes from someone who depends upon God, which is, if, if nothing else, certainly the theme of this entire book, he's emphasizing that that is cheap. It doesn't cost you anything. The effort you expend to obtain it is not costly. And um, and this is why one should turn to God for help. Lama tishtukulu kasef. Let's look at verse 2. Why do you spend money below lechem for 
something that is not bread. In other words, you spend so much money on physical things, you spend so much effort and energy in obtaining physical things, while those things do not sustain you. V'yigiachem below this ava, and all of your efforts are being put out, and you are never satisfied. Shimu shamoa elai, listen to me. Remember, Isaiah, when he was given his mission, God said, I want you to bring this message to the people, but they're not going to listen. But it was Isaiah's mission to get them to listen. So therefore, Shimu shamoa, listen to me, elai, v'ichlutov, and then you'll eat good. You will eat goodness. V'tisanag b'desha nafshechem, and you will have, and you will sustain your souls with, with deshen, with, with uh, rich um, produce. In other words, if you listen to me, if you stick with God, you will sustain your souls in something meaningful, something much, much more long-lasting than what you're spending all your time and effort trying to achieve. Hatu oznechem, tilt your ears, u'lechu elai, and come to me. Shimu, and then listen to me. U'sechi nafshechem, and your souls will be given life. This is something that will be achor solach and bris olam, and then I will, I will make with you an everlasting bris, an everlasting covenant. Chastei David ha'ne'emonim. And what is this everlasting covenant? It is the everlasting covenant of the kindness of David ha'ne'emonim, who is trustworthy, who is faithful, who is with God forever and ever. That is the covenant that I am going to make with you. And now, referring to David, and not just David, but the house of David in general, that's why I was listed in the language of plural, the house which David established, which goes through the generations all the way until the Messiah himself, until Mashiach himself, I placed him, I placed King David and his descendants and those that carry on his message, meaning the Jewish people, I made him a witness li'umim for all nations, Nisativ. That's what I placed him. So that he should carry this message to all of the nations of the world. This is for everyone to partake. It is the mission of David and his people that he represents and leads to bring this message to all. Umitzavei li'umim. And to bring commands, these commandments, to all nations of the world. Hein goy lo seidatikra. Behold, you are going to call out to nations that you don't even know about. In other words, he is telling them there's nations around the entire world, and we've had these references in several places so far in the book of Isaiah. Nations everywhere. Nations that you, at this time, when Isaiah is speaking to the people, are far across the seas that you don't even know of, but you're going to call out to them too. V'goy lo yida'ucha, and a nation who didn't even know of your existence, elecha yarutu, one day, will come and run to you. Why? Leman Adonai Elecha. Because of God. Because of the God who is your God. Likdosh Yisrael. And to the Holy One of Israel. Because they will find out this news. And you are going to call out to them and bring them this news. Kifei Arach. Because they will see how much glory the God of Israel has brought to you. And they will be drawn to this message. Peoples that you have never met and you don't even know existed. God continues... And now, I mean, Isaiah continues in verse 6 to instruct us. Dirshu Adonai Behi Matzo. Search out God when you can find Him. Kira'u, call out to Him, Behi Oso Korov. At a time when He is close by. Um, this particular pasuk, this verse must be the subject of uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of sermons over the generations. Especially during the time of... Um, of uh, the high holiday season on the Jewish calendar. But um, I, this one of the main, I'm just going to pick on one of the main subjects. What does this mean? Search out God when he is found and call out to him when he is near. There, there must, some, some people will ask, why when he is near? When he is far is the time when I would most want to search him out when I can't find him, not when he is near. What does this mean, search when he is near? I'm not going to, there must be hundreds of explanations, and it's not the place of this um, podcast to go through them. I'm just going to pick one of them, that of the Radak, on the page who explains that, as we say in Tehillim and Psalms, Karov Hashem l'chol Karov l'chol Asher Ms. God is close to all who call out to Him, to anyone who calls out to Him in truth. 
In other words, so what does this mean, call out to him when he is close? When is he close? When you call out to him in truth. And that's what it's saying. God is close when you truthfully and meaningfully and with wholeheartedly call out to him. That's what it means. Search him out when he is found and call to him when he is close. When is he close? When you search him out and you call to him with full wholehearted honesty. And because it requires honesty, that leads into the next pasuk, which is the reason why I chose the Radak's explanation, because it leads into the next pasuk when you when you mean to call out to him in honesty and truth, it means that you um um Yazov Rashad as follows Yazov Rashad Darko in verse seven. The, let the evil person or the bad person abandon his way, his evil way. Be each oven and a sinful person, let him abandon his sinful, evil plans. Rather, via shovel Adonai, let him return to God and repent, via and God will have mercy upon him. Via Eloheinu, and let him return to our God. Why does this say Eloheinu, our God, over here? Because of the idea which we just saw in verse 5 that, that, he is our God, and He gives forgiveness. And what He wants is our entire heart. He wants Yazov Rasha Darko, that the evil person should abandon his evil ways. Ki Yarbelis Loach, because He is someone who is abundant in His forgiveness. And why would evil people around the world return to our God? Because, because our God is... Is giving is bringing this message to the world of forgiveness. Why should you return to God? Because my thoughts, my ways are not like your ways. My plans are not like your plans. And my ways are not like your ways. This is what God says. Because the heavens are much much higher than the land. So my ways are much, much higher and much different on a different plane, a different type from your ways in Machshavot Saim and Machshavot Sichem and my plans and ideas are different from your plans and ideas. What does this mean here? This is another topic, a sermon topic, which there must be hundreds of approaches to understand this, but I'm just going to choose the idea um, um, of the how the Radak explains this. Human beings can't fully forgive. If you approach another person after having done evil to him, it is extremely difficult, if not impossible. The person might say and try to forgive and might tell you he forgives you, but there's always going to be some bad feeling, bad taste. There's always going to be some grudge being born. It's that, so, so it's almost discouraging to go and ask forgiveness when, when because for human beings, we're almost hardwired in our, in our, in our nature. Uh, you know, even, even in the animal nature within us doesn't allow us to truly, truly, truly forgive. It takes a lot of work to forgive. But God is saying, no, if you come back to me with honesty, with truth, and you really, really, really mean it, God says, I, my ways are not like your ways. I can forgive. I can do it. And I will, therefore, come back to me. Remember, this is Isaiah's approach, trying to convince people, to, the people to come back to God and to listen to his message. And then God continues, Why is it that I am different than you? Because I don't need anything from you. And he continues in verse 10 as follows, Just like the rain and the snow comes down from the heavens, I give that to you. But it doesn't go back to the heavens. It doesn't give anything back to me. I give you, but I get nothing back from you. Ki imir as all it does is it give, makes the land um, soaked with the nourishment that it needs, v'holi dov, it's micha, and then it gives birth to all of the plants and the bounty and the sprouts that grow forth, v'nosan zera la zorea, and it gives seed to those that need to plant, v'lechem lo ochel, and eventually it gives bread to people to eat. But v'sham yashuv, God said, it doesn't come back to me. I don't need anything from you. I am not like human beings that are tit for tat, back and forth. But rather, I am a God that gives, but needs nothing back in return. Which is why my forgiveness is real. Ken yedvari, God says, asher yitzhemi In the same way that I give you physical bounty, the words that I give to you, and the words that come from my mouth, 
Lo yashuv elai reikam. They do not come back to me in an empty way. In other words, when you do something for me, you're not giving me anything. I don't need anything from you. Ki im All I want is that he, the people, the human beings should do that which I desire, which is to act in just and righteous and honest ways. And I want the person to be successful in that mission which I send him upon. That's it. Nothing else comes back to me, God says. And and I just want to point out here if we uh, that this is also um uh, a, uh, uh, a a contrast God is saying between the God of of Yeshayahu, the God of Israel, and and the notions that people had of gods in general in the time. If we look back at fifty five, verse five. I'm sorry, fifty six, verse five. God was talking the contrasting belief in God with the belief. Um, I'm sorry, uh, 46, chapter 46, verse 5, uh, with, with the belief in idols that was so common in those days. It was a belief in a tit-for-tat system. You gave the God sacrifices and you got back some kind of, uh, of, of, of reward. God says, reading 56, 46, verse 5, To whom can you compare me? You can't compare me to the other gods. I'm not just another one of the other gods that just happens to be more powerful. But I'm totally different. Those gods demand gold and silver and things to people to give them. And then they demand that you bow to them and so on. But then what happens in the end? In the end, they have nothing to give. You carry the idol. They become a burden for you. I am not like that, God says. That's not me. Right and those gods, Afitzakilov, you can cry Valoyahana, they cannot answer. They do not save you. But rather, God says after that, Hashivu Posh Im Alev. I want you to return to me. Just like he says here, I want you to come back to me. I want you to give me your heart, give me your soul. Because Zikhruri Shanos Melam Kianochi El Veinod, I am a God, there is nothing like me. Elohim the Ephes Kamoni, you can't compare me to anything else. I'm different, God says. I don't need anything from you. I don't want anything from you. I do everything I want. I created everything. And then God says, um, uh, I am the one who can bring redemption to Israel. I am the one that can redeem the world. And then he continues over here again in verse 12. Because if you do listen to me, and you do uh, uh, obey me and live out the life that I ask you to live, then you shall go out. All of your all of your going goings out, all of your travels will be with happiness. And you will be brought home to, to, to your land in peace. The mountains and the heights will dance in front of you and shout in front of you in song. And all of the trees of the field will clap their hands in celebration. <coughs> Instead of a... Um, a uh, is a, a tree that grows in ruins. It's generally associated with ruins. A, a cypress tree will grow nice and beautiful. And instead of a thorn bush, will grow a, a myrtle bush, which which gives forth a beautiful smell and berries and so on. And it will be, it will stand as a as a testimony as um to God, the entire Osolam for a sign forever, loyi kareis, that will never be broken, that bris olam that he promised several verses ago will be forever, if only you return to God with your full heart. Thank you so much for listening to chapter 55. Looking forward to studying 56 together.